Hello, Alan here. Another year of typing results. I think we're five years into it and I'm still going, running strong and there's actually some new questions. So let's jump straight in. Question one, what is your average day week like? For me, consistent. There's a lot of pockets of opportunity for socializing, retreat, uh, personal time, recovery, all those sorts of uh, good things. And so the consistency is driven by an underlying purpose to our decision making. So we start with a annual plan. A lot of that plan is going to outline uh, pockets throughout the year of things that we want to commit to, whether it's for others or for ourselves. It's also going to uh, in some ways outline things that we will exclude and not commit our time towards and so there is discipline uh, to undertake the mandatory things and there's flexibility to undertake the rest as you feel on the day so consistency question two tell us about a story that frustrated you this week Okay, so uh, I did have a mini meltdown. Sorry, Ali. What happened? Well, if you ask Ali, we had a disagreement and I escalated. What happened to the screen? Uh, we, had, we had a disagreement and I escalated too rapidly. Uh, and lost lost my call from my perspective it's more complicated more nuanced than that uh, but how it comes out uh, was a bit of a rage bomb i suppose or no i suppose it was the what was happening was we've got a two-car garage and we've got two and a half vehicles to park in there uh, so we're doing the Jenga puzzle of what's going to be the most optimal way to satisfy both of us. And, you know, it's a decision that we both have to be involved with because we've both got our vehicles that we need to access through there. And Ali in particular uh, has to deal with the kids a lot with the car. So in many ways, it's got the trumping right. So we found a configuration. In short, it was satisfactory, but only that. So we walked away thinking this will work. Well, okay, that is the agreement in place, but it's not enough for me. I want something that is not going to frustrate me every single day. I'll tolerate it or settle with it if I have to, but I haven't exhausted yet if I have to. So we're doing something unrelated and I had a Eureka moment. <laughs> and suggested we try something uh, different where we would reverse the way that we always park. So we've actually got spots. And uh, the reason why we've got spots is one side is a lot more accessible than the other. So if we reverse the spots then the uh, alley would be in the non-accessible side, which has the kids, potentially doesn't work, okay? All I wanted to do was give it a go and uh, what I got immediately was pushback, rejection, not going to do it. Uh, that's my, my take on it. Um, Ali may think it's a touch more nuanced. So I didn't respond well to it. There's some other contributing factors as well. I was tired um, and, a, and a few other things. In the end, the frustration what's the motivation behind it so i've just told a story about why i got frustrated for me i got frustrated i believe rapidly because i thought about it would i have reacted that way at work no so why would i react that way at home with people that matter so much more to me and that's that's the the twist in the whole saga because the people matter to you sometimes you harbor compromises from the past and that builds up to pent-up frustration and 
What I believe was the source of the frustration this week is it reopened the uh, existing scar, which I've commented and had many discussions with Ali about. Uh, and this, I think, is as a couple's dynamic, a information game where I'm last last. I don't want to give more information. I've already said this is what we can do. Why do I need to describe it more? Ali's consume last. Um, so, you know, he's prodding for more information. And so we're at this impasse of information. Uh, because what was funny is later on in the day, I just said, fuck this. I went and parked all the cars myself. And in the process of doing that, Ali came out and said, okay, I'm going to give it a go. Uh, <laughs> and worked out fine in the end. We decided to stick with our original plan. So uh, the source of the frustration... I, I believe is this ongoing dilemma between blast and consume uh, with two people that love each other very much and willing to tolerate and work through that. <laughs> number three, question number three. Tell us about the three closest people in your life. This, this question uh, presents me with two forks. I have a more classic answer that I, I feel would be more socially inclined. And that would be Ali, my, my partner, our two kids, which I'll lump as one entity and two very close friends which i would lump as an entity but that's not the answer i'm going to share this is probably more peacocking than anything but i i think this I, i'm curious to watch the video with this to see how authentic I, I i feel when i watch myself talk about it but if anything, this is kind of the impetus for me to more shift the mindset towards this. So enough of this teasing. I think the closest, uh, number one, if we talk about three closest people in your life, I think number one needs to be me. No one knows me better than me. And I'm talking about the voice inside my head, that element of soul, consciousness, whatever you want to call it, spirit, I have the most intimate relationship uh, with, with that person. I'm trying not to use words like personality, etc. This has to be me. I spend a lot of time reducing through the chatter, getting to an intuitive space and not intuitive in objective personality terms intuitive in the sense of it's not governed by what we dictate as fact uh, it's not necessarily feeling either uh, that sensation that the, the the gut feeling or if you think in the terms of uh, Enneagram um, mind heart gut that 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 intrinsic combination I've spent a lot of time getting more and more attuned into that space it must be me even though that's not the first answer that that came to me from trying to satisfy a question i, I feel it needs to be that number two then has to be ali uh, my partner she's the one that's well, we've been together now maybe 15 to 16 years, maybe even 17, uh, uh, you know, half our, more than half our lifetime. She's seen, she's been with me through the ups. She supported me through the downs. She's seen the ugliest parts of me and is still here. It's weird because people like your parents they're there for the, the first half of the uh, of my life and Ali's been there for the second half so why do I say Ali and not my parents 
there's so much progression when 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 you're living at home you're under their rules guidance mantras belief systems when you leave you become your own person if people you've lived your life with aren't open to that change then they don't know who you are today and that's why I don't include those people that were there in the first half of my life in many ways you're I've been typecast it, it, uh, I think that's very fair to say uh, and in, in, in quite often Ali will typecast me you know we'll have some disagreements where you'll be like well I don't want to say that because in the past um, you've been triggered uh, and it, you know it's very painful to hear that type of trauma has existed um, so there's still a lot of work to go uh, the third closest people it's not going to be the kids I'll say is uh, uh, my two dearest friends uh, Lenny I've known for a little bit longer than Ali so it's uh, we only just realized recently we've, we've, we've known each other for that long and we've had our ups and downs uh, recently you could say there's been a lot of downs and it's just picked up again in the past year uh, and once again there's a, there's a lot of shared experience there some really exciting and some quite devastating and, and ugly and I feel with that comes a bond not all bonds are unbreakable but as close to a blood bond as as possible and Pav's also been a fantastic friend haven't known him for as long maybe seven years or something like that I forget and once again you know our, our timings don't always line up so it's it's fleeting here or there but those three those four people me me Ali Lenny Pav we are all able to have an overlap of engagement or but also provide a lot of diversity of thought uh, and contribution to conversation so it's always very exciting stimulating engaging and most importantly I feel it's also very even uh, whereas sometimes you get those people that it can be extremely one-sided and honestly even though I can do the play element with people relatively easy I get bored when it's not reciprocated once again that, that last last coin of why don't I just share some information okay question four what is wrong with the government and politics these days <laughs> I think this is a new one it used to be what's wrong with the world it's an interesting question because in particular with the recession and a lot of world events there's so much media whether it's the primary media or the new media talking uh, or discussing politics poor, uh, and, and concerns for where humanity is going but I also pose on the other hand if I had to live anywhere in the world I would still choose to live in Australia I, I love so many aspects of Australia so clearly something is going right with the government and politics here comparatively and I feel that's the key in regards to this question comparatively and where I'm going to take it so my problem with co comparatively is that when I look at this question the way I actually reframe it is much like a toxic person in your interactions you can you can have a toxic person that you need to engage with on a regular basis maybe even as a partner but how much you let them into your mind is your own boundary to manage why does this matter I feel it's the same with government uh, government and politics that what 
can be get what what an authority can get away with comes down to what the masses of people will tolerate and i really do believe in this dynamic the power lies with the masses if the masses can be unified big ask very very big ask uh, unfortunately maslow's hierarchy of needs i've found to be extremely true and when it comes to survival versus unification um, i haven't seen unification triumph yet so what is wrong with government and politics these days is actually a reflection of what is wrong with the tolerance levels people have as a collective and as a collective if we won't tolerate a lot of the issues when it comes to funding transparency decision making anything else then something new would be forced to evolve what that is i don't know the, but the point is the system that exists today is here precisely because it's the system that we as a collective accept five tell us a story about the best and or worst time in your life <laughs> as i'm getting older the magnitude of joy and pain is losing a lot of intensity i must say the the pain that i felt during my first uh maybe only heartbreak uh, i haven't really experienced anything as intense as that uh, i'm sure if something happened to my immediate family it would be much much worse than that but to date that's potentially the the worst as a magnitude and with with joy there's been lots of moments but interestingly the way i would describe this now through the story i've lived to date is the greatest stories not best or worst the greatest are for me the ones that have left an imprint and our act of leaving an imprint means you've gone through a challenge there's been an outcome success or failure doesn't matter but it's left an outcome and there's been some sort of lesson learned now that lesson learned might still lead to repeat behavior but it's an imprint nonetheless so the one that i'll share which has got some themes of moments of triumph moments of darkness is when i started exploring this ob objective personality space in in much deeper depths i knew for a very long time even before i was objectively typed that i was uncomfortable being in public or like social uh, uh yeah, public sphere by myself not that i couldn't walk somewhere by myself uh or go to work by myself take the uh what i mean is when i was on a business trip to sit in a restaurant by myself was absolute torture uh <laughs> And i'd be thinking constantly what are uh, the, the the other people here thinking about me which which is such a projection I, I i know so i had never even gone to a cinema by myself and then when i met pav um, who's very much a, a deep uh, individualist uh, he, he was shocked that i'd never gone to the movies by himself because that was something for him that that you know he, he he'd done many times and so through the combination of knowing this flaw uh, or vulnerability about myself about myself and then um, being focused on this subjective personality world where you could actually describe it in a language that then computed to me so i could create an action plan of sorts 
I decided to uh, challenge myself to explore uh, these type of boundaries, being by myself, uh, dealing with the chatter of the mind. So uh, through there every week, went out uh, and got immersed into that space. And just like riding a bike, you know, it's hard at the beginning, it becomes so much easier. You feel mastery, you know, that hero's journey. You're coming back home with a trophy. So you start trying new things. What else can I do? And through through that through that process, uh, effectively that that moment that felt like a best time in in your life at that moment, you feel like you have superpowers, you can do anything. Uh, you start pushing boundaries. Uh, and through that process of pushing boundaries, I'm not going to share some of the things that happened, but it led to some very significant trauma and pain for both me and Ali. Um, it became the worst time in my life. In, in some ways, when you've opened up your mindset and you're viewing things from not not a different perspective but you've got the capability of understanding or having um, uh, recognition of many more perspectives but as well as still with the pre your your, your inherent ones um, you can almost feel like a new person and 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 with that comes a, a lot of issues uh, some some of those are uh, you know, you could you could you could describe it as a midlife crisis. You're starting challenging your why, why am I here? All those type of things. Uh, it was a very painful moment. So the the best time naturally became the worst time, and you know, it's just another test, uh, a, a test to see what do you do in those moments of weakness what do the people around you do in the moments of weakness and I, I i believe in life you need to be grateful to have those opportunities and in some way seek them organically that's the real test of the people you want to surround yourself with you know if you go into that ed Milet air conditioner um you know you want to stay you want to be brought down stay around cold negative people you want to be brought up um, you know, stay around people that, that are going to provide that type of vibe. So I look back on this with excitement, pain. I wouldn't take it back. You know, it, it, it has left an imprint for me. It's part of who I am today. It's part of the people around me who they are today to to take that back would be living in a parallel universe and if you want to if you want to me to say a story about the best or worst time in your life I, be, I do believe it's that imprint that hero's journey that's critical and so with time i'm able to look back at that with lessons learned and uh, it has left an imprint that I, I won't judge as, as good or bad. Six. Question six. What is the biggest challenge in your life right now? It's a hard one for me because... There are several things that grind my gears repetitively, but I've also chosen to be involved with them. So it's more kind of like the transaction of doing business. Uh, so I wouldn't call them them challenges, but those are things that immediately spring to mind. Some of them are relating to the involvement I want to have as a father and how quickly kids learn all your maneuvers and it's just a constant evolution i think 
if I go back to the average day a week, like I shared that there's an underlying purpose to the year. But what about longer than that? You know, I believe we are the, the product of what we tolerate, what we commit our time to. We're a product of our focus over time. So I think for me, the biggest challenge right now is there's a sense of confidence. I don't want to use the word mastery. Uh, there's a sense of confidence that literally anything I want to put my mind to, I can. I don't want to say self-actualized. Uh, I think these are two coined wanky terms. So I'm going to say I'm full of confidence that what I dream of, I can manifest. So with great power comes great responsibility. What shall I manifest? Many people pose with that problem would have a hundred things that jump to mind and would think that how can I would not be able to compute why I'm paused. But I see it differently. I see it as once again, going back to that conversation with me, that voice inside the, the soul spirit. How do you, where, not how, but where do you commit that energy that is aligned with that neutral state and not some sort of knee, uh, knee jerk response to something that you don't even realize you're being triggered by? That, that for me is the interesting challenge. The concern with that space then is, do you end up doing nothing? If you continually wait for the neutral state. So there's a balancing act required. Uh, a, a tension between doing and listening. And that's a tension that I'm, fi I'm finding myself more and more attuned to. And I find myself attuned to it because for the past couple of years, we've had uh, some mega projects at home. So in some ways I was allowed to switch off, compartmentalize, focus on the mega project. Well, now a lot of them are done. And what that's done is it's freed up a lot of that capacity. And so the recognition between the doing and the stillness is much more apparent than it was before. And I feel this is an important question to dwell on. It's important not to be, fo equally it's important not to be focused on the outcome. The outcomes are relevant. What's important, I feel, is to give it the respect to dwell on. So what happens next, I don't know. But the biggest challenge is to allow that dwelling to happen and, and, and not force it. And then there's exciting times ahead, I know it. Question seven, what type do you see yourself and why? I've always agreed with the typing result, T-E-S-A, or ENTJ, play, consume, or ENTJ jumper, play, consume, sleep, blast. And I've always agreed with the animals, as I've said just then, and the modalities. The modalities is probably the most interesting for me because we have two young kids seeing them grow up. One uh, boy with, I believe, lead, double masculine consume, and a, a sleep, blast, um, T and I daughter. Um, it's, it, it's been really interesting. My daughter's and I had seven, just wow, what can, wows me. What she can piece together of such limited stuff. I don't feel that my NI is that much further ahead than her, which is crazy. It's crazy. Uh, tr truly, truly. Uh, she's seven, so I might have the NI of a 10 year old, in fairness. <laughs> and then when I look at the 
masculine sensory of my son who I believe is double M consume first um, so double masculine consume he his 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 focus on the sensory makes me feel like feminine sensory but then you have that Chris Rock uh, video, which I happened to watch today, where they had him and yourself next to each other. So you had feminine sensory, masculine sensory. It's like, who, who, who's the masculine person? So look, I, I, I'm still comfortable with the uh, double M ENTJ uh, jumper typing. But the reason I went into this is sometimes I feel that the sometimes I feel like I play, play I put a lot more attention onto the intuition but I think that's not a reflection of the modalities I, I believe it's a reflection of uh, the maturity and the willingness to be more open to other perspectives and so even though as a child I thought myself to be extroverted to these days i completely see myself as introverted which is how ops would describe me because you've got the one extroverted animal followed by the two um two introverted and i feel a lot of the time my default state is now a consume sleep mope and this the, the emphasis in on my this emphasis on my double feminine sleep world in the past year is or the transition into spending so much more time in that space is amazing and it's to the chagrin or frustration of Ali who a lot of times now uh, uh, um, she's talking to me I just don't register anything because I'm, I'm, I'm in that zone where it, it's where the information is coming and just exits um, there's no respect any, any anymore it's not against her it's just in general like when, when, I, when I'm in that space it's almost like the doors locked uh, I don't know what I don't I don't know if the next stage of evolution would be for me to be in a sleep blast state I'm not entirely sure but right now I feel like in general you could say that uh, living with me is being is like living in uh, with a consumed sleep mope did I answer the question what type do you see so often why sort of gave some support to things but I haven't really said why I thought I was an ENTJ in the first place and I don't really care it's been said in other videos I've felt this way for a long time still do the interesting part for me then with this question the, the natural segue is if somebody puts the effort in becomes the OPS alpha state then how would you get typed in that state if you've got the capacity to be even across the eight functions for animals I uh, have a very diverse diverse range of perspective and contribution how would you get typed I've thought about this a few times I don't know what the answer is uh, my suspicion is the answer would land with however sad guru was typed um, I don't I'm not a member anymore so I haven't seen but quite fascinated I have I have an underlying curiosity how sad guru was typed um, I think that would illuminate this space question eight what are you wanting to get out of the typing process <laughs> I do this because it's important for me to remind myself I can be bare I can be vulnerable and in a public space of course I know the visibility on these type of videos is fuck all but it doesn't it doesn't change the point that it's public 
you're exposed. And so it's a reminder to me to be bare and vulnerable. If I can do that with the public, then do it with the people around me that matter. That's what I get out of this. Okay, well, it's been great. Uh, another year gone. I enjoyed these new set of questions and I look forward to the next one. Thanks, Dave and Shane. Bye.